Welcome to episode number 461 of This Week in League. I'm Nate. And I'm Jay. And I'm Glenn. How you doing, fellas? Fucking great. Fantastic. Couldn't be fucking better. Couldn't be better. Wade Six. works today. Fucking went to the movies. Had a fucking good weekend. Couldn't be better. Winning. Nice. Fucking hell. Like, you know, second verse, same as the first. How good is it just winning every fucking weekend? I love it. Exactly. How fucking good is it? Look, Glenny's face is not happy. Cheer up, Glenny. Clap your hands, little yeah, Glenny. <laughs> for the manly. <laughs> Ring your seat. One of my hands across your fucking face. Shut up. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Tigers in decline. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That was fucking How good. <laughs> and the also, black, of course, the black know, wiggle. Sixers tied it up again. Let's go. Did we win the trade, stepdad? Fuck. Was it even a trade? I think even it was they an could ac- barely get Ben Simmons to fucking training. I think it was an acquisition <laughs> and some charity. Oh. Who Tell you said, what, who said hard and wasn't worth it? This, uh, th- this, this may very well turn into a basketball podcast. <sighs> oh, I tell as, you we, as we if, as we chart we as we chart the uh, the next coming of the Clearies as stepdad and stepdad junior oh. <laughs> go through an undefeated season <laughs> in the North Brisbane it's basketball an, no, let's, let's be clear. Let's be clear. It's an undefeated asterisk season, though, isn't it? No, it's not. The season hasn't started. Oh, because you had that first outing that wasn't great. No, so there's three games of grading. Okay. Um, and for some reason, just based on, I think, I think, you know, two surnames being the same in coach and, and one player, they've just assumed that these kids are at least a Division Two team, at least. You know? <laughs> so they've, they've thrown him in. But Train unfortunately, it was the, it was the Warriors. It was the Warriors edition. But unfortunately, it was the Arthurs, not the fucking Cleary. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, so they're 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 a team of seven and nine year olds playing under elevens. So they are in no way fucking Division Two ready. Yeah. So once they get knocked back down to their rightful rightful group, they take a couple of, take a couple of floggings and then get graded correctly. That's and it. Dominate That's their it. group. Yeah, so these are these are preseason trials. We all know how good winning them is. Oh, well, there'll be a standing ovation for them, surely. <laughs> <laughs> and like, yeah, at, at this point, at this point, you can at least say that they're always in a fucking game. Yeah, it was, <laughs> and <laughs> I'm out there, right? And you know, we we're speaking to speaking to our mate Benny, who we played a lot, and he's put me onto some some great apps that you can get in and put your coaching plans in and, and all that stuff. It's one of them in NBA 2K. Well, I... <laughs> um, and here I am thinking because the last group of kids I coached was sort of you know just just teenagers like twelve thirteen, yeah, um, and and had been playing for a little while, and so I was yep cool I'll teach them this and this and this and this and this. No, I'm teaching them how to not travel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, that's all right. So, yep, my like it, my job is now a thousand percent easier than I thought it was ever going to fucking be. So. <laughs> yeah, not to mention like a thousand percent less pressure too because these yeah, kids, exactly. these are kids that are actually only just learning fundamentals and stuff. Oh man, again, after after 10 minutes, fantastic group of kids, not a shithead kid in sight, which means yep. great group of parents. Yeah. Yep. You know, um, all firmly there for the kids want to play, let them have fun, um, yep. Effort. Win so. at all costs. Gotcha. Yeah, exactly. So, no. Yeah. <laughs> Jackson, uh, Jackson had his first competitive game for club basketball on Friday night. Did he wear his mellows? Yeah. No, he hasn't got the mellows yet. He hasn't oh, got his mellows. Fuck. So, he uh, still on the agenda. Hasn't got around to it. And I'm not fucking taking the onus on it. It's up to him. And yep. so, now we have... Swimming, Leo has swimming and soccer training and game, and Jackson has basketball, and he's now playing men's B grade touch football. So Swi- swimming and soccer—that is a fucking hammers like combo of sports yeah. that aren't really sports. We're talking, we're talking Leo Blakely here, mate. If there's a way to fucking go left of the middle, he's going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Um, Look for him to represent Australia in like the fucking 20, the 2040 fucking swimmer, Olympics soggy, in ball-y curling. fucking. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you, yeah, you watch, you'll, say, you'll uh, become a fucking champion water polo player yeah, now. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> to say our, uh, our week's uh, full running around, which I fucking love. My wife, not so much, but um, yeah, good times. Um, yes, but any, anyone, even if you don't have kids, if, if you find yourself as a sports fan getting down in the dumps, like, you know, your team might be shit and you spend all your time dealing with toxic fuckheads on social media and reading clickbait bullshit in the media, um, get down to some kids' sport and watch that and just remember that fucking unbridled love of whatever fucking game it is. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, it's funny. I enjoyed watching games of basketball and football more on the weekend after spending some time at a kid's sports venue. So there you go. In, in a in a non creepy way, get down and watch kids. You filled your cup with Dairy Queen. <laughs> yeah, good. Or go and watch my kid playing in uh, a men's competition and fucking being the yappiest cunt on the field. Okay, whatever. Fantastic. Yeah, but he was a yappy. A- I mean, yappy in the eh? field in kids competition. <laughs> yeah, like, absolutely. Or <laughs> oh, you could watch him play basketball on a Friday night where he happened to play against a kid that he uh, goes to school with who is probably a good, I won't say a foot taller, but he'd have to have eight, be eight inches taller uh, and is a uh, young African lad. And Jackson fucking mercilessly just yapped <laughs> This kid to the point where he was easily the best player on his team and did not score a point because Jackson was just in his fucking ear the entire time. So, anyway. That's also, that, that's a tool. That is a tool. <laughs> it is. He is a tool, it is a tool and it is a tool. <laughs> exactly it. <laughs> Look, and in, in, the absence, in the absence of one of our good friends being here, uh, you, you do need to teach him the you're too little emote. Oh, he's, he's, he's got that. He does? Okay, nice. I, I don't know that he's going to pull it out for a little while yet, but um, no, he's fitting in nicely. Yeah, well, I don't know, fitting in, forcing his way, <laughs> whatever. He's in there. Uh, fuck yes. It's the Blakely way. This week in Dad's Living Vicariously Through Their Kids. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, and I don't have to live on because mine, mine isn't still there yet to re- yet to reach the fucking level of musical fucking exposure <laughs> that I got for myself. So, <laughs> so try and live up to me, motherfuckers. Oh, Jesus it's the old uh, Frost. They're, they're, they're at, the, at the moment they're fucking Brett and Scott Fulton. <laughs> <laughs> just, 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 just trying, just trying to get some vitamin D in this shadow. Oh fuck yeah! <laughs> right now. <laughs> oh fuck! I can't wait to use that. That's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, go. I mean, yeah, ad- adapt it for your own combinations. Oh man, oh, man. don't you worry. <laughs> Yeah. Why so right, mean, you got, you got, you've got, you've got, you've got, you've got zero there with Bailey and fucking Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to use a tiger specific reference, yeah, that's it. <laughs> right, round nine. Let's fucking rock. Um, Thursday night, the Brisbane Broncos thirty-two smash the South Sydney Rabbitohs twelve, and uh, the Broncos thirty-two came through tries to Corey Oates, Adam Reynolds, Herbie Farnworth, and a double to Cobbo. Five conversions and a penalty for Adam Reynolds with no misses. The Raps 12 came through a double to Tane Milne and two conversions to Taffy. I thought Reynolds was, again, instrumental in everything positive that the Broncos did. And he's, he's really putting his stamp on, on this side you know, in a huge way for Brisbane and, and probably compensating for, for some of Kevy's coaching deficiencies I feel and he's um, probably extended Kevin Walters coaching career by a good few seasons um, he's just I don't he's Reynolds obviously he's, he's you know he's a great halfback and he's, a, he's an excellent footballer but like he's not a he doesn't blow people away with his speed or you know he's not a fa- fantastic athlete so to speak but he's brain for that side is exactly what they needed and what some of those young guys in the side um, needed to, to be able to draw on and, and it's 
every week they they just get that bit better. I feel Brisbane and yeah. South are in complete contrast to that. They um, they missed it, and I think you know we we've said it before and, and multiple times over the last several weeks for South Sydney that um, there's a there's a leadership and a directional hole in that side that that Cody Walker is never going to fill. Especially yeah, when he keeps never. displaying, you know, the fucking walking brain snap behaviour. Mm-hmm. As in, Not, that hasn't even been tempered. Like it, you yeah. would say, it's if anything, it's more. <laughs> and I think and he I, kind of, I think he kind of needs it. Like that's one of the things that gets you know, like he sort of gets fired up. Mm. But the problem is, fifty percent of the time, it's like, you know, he can cost his team it's games. It's detrimental. Yeah. But yeah. it's, it, I mean, it's there like are the times the, when he'll just go go crazy. With, you know, he'll he'll the incident will happen where he has the brain snap, and then after that, he's just in fucking god mode and just can't do anything wrong. But they, they seem to be happening like not. They don't happen at all. Seem, seemingly since Reynolds is gone. I yeah. oh, see. To me, I I I think he has a threshold, and I think there's pissed off, pissed off, pissed off, and he he gets into fucking I'll show you mode. Yeah. But then there is a it's, cliffy falls off. There's a white noise mode. That's, and that's it. where he fucks it. Yeah. That's it. And. And it's like you know, you know the old video games where you had to like you know tap tap your button, tap your button, tap your button, and then you fuck it up and go too far, and mm. you ruin it. But when he's giving away penalties, when he's yappy at the referees, and then all of a sudden, if you're yappy at other players after you've fucked up and continue fucking up, you're giving them ammunition to mm. make you angrier and more out of control. Yeah, um, I was thinking on the Reynolds thing a lot. It was Glenn, it was funny, it was exactly as you've just said. He's not a, an athletic specimen. He's not, um, you know, he doesn't have that, oh, oh my God, Matt Burton's boot, look how fucking far he can mm. kick. Mm. I think we've just been so spoiled, especially in recent times, with these generational talents. You know, we, we went from the era where where Johns was just doing things with the football that that seemed impossible for others to try and replicate. And then we jumped almost straight away into the age of Thurston. And then while he was there as well, he had Cronk, you know, in that era. And they're all, you know, very, very different players, vastly different. But we had these number sevens that just excelled. Adam Reynolds is an example of just how little it takes to be an effective number seven in a professional football team. And I'm not trying to diminish anything he does because the man's won fucking premierships and he plays so far above his weight grade in, in defence and, and even when he's running the ball. Tries his fucking guts out every time he's on the field. But all he brings is a calmness, is the ability to execute a plan and the ability to think a few, st- a few sets ahead of where he is. Which makes and you it, wonder why there aren't more that's like it. that. Exactly. Like, fair enough, you can accept that there's not more Thurston's or not more John's or not more Cronk's. Yeah. <laughs> but why are there not more players with but even, the, I think, with I the think temperament even was, and the... I, and the I, I think even Cronk was like that, just a, just a massively, you know, like, over-the-top level of that. And that's what like he wasn't yeah. like. I wouldn't have put. I wouldn't have put him with Joey and Thurston, who were like, like. I think Cronk had to work at it super hard. Yeah, the other two I, I think obviously what, supernatural talents. Where, exactly, you know, that I think if you look at the God-given talents, Kronk is is down the list. He, but he as far is. as effort and work, he's he's on top exactly. of the list. And so I yeah. think that puts him. But in I mean, that I think academically though, like in the actual work around the game. Sure. I think Kronk. Yeah. That's you know where I mean? he set himself apart. The mind yeah. part, yeah, yeah, the mental side of it. Yeah. And, well, here's the thing, you know, I I don't think Adam <clears> Reynolds is spending four hours after training just doing chip kick drills or no. I think he's I think he is at the tattooist. Yeah, that's it. Um, Surely he's run out of space. Like, I mean, it's just his face no, left. I just, isn't it? I just feel like if you're getting Post Malone tattooed on your leg, yeah. you, you've run out of ideas. Oh, really? Just yeah. Oh, fucking hell. Post um, Malone. Like, I, I don't mind Post Malone's music, but fuck me. Name three of his songs, Glenn. Look, we're not going to get into that. I fucking listen. I listen to Post Malone all the time. I don't know what you're trying Just, to insinuate. You you driving along in your car, 
singing Post Malone and Me doesn't count as liking Post Malone's music. <laughs> what if I got like a two-faced version of Adam Duritz on one side and Post Malone on the other? Oh, ter- now there's an idea. Why didn't you get that? Um, yeah, but the, again, you, you show exactly what he's done to this Bronco side who who put in some good performances last year but are a completely different team mm. You know, with, with him in it. And then the starkest contrast, obviously, is what Souths miss. Yeah, when he's yep. when he's not there. Uh, again, obviously, the most profile signing this year, but still for my money, the the best movement in the off season. The Broncos did well. But how often in this game does South just look rushed, and yep. they panicked when when they were put yep. under pressure or when they needed to find points? They they so everything they just a, calm, a calming yeah. a calming organising influence. Are you saying yeah. exactly? Is that what they needed? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> where they ever would have found it. Like you know you. I don't know how much notice you took during the grand final, but the couple of times I've seen Reynolds play live, and it comes out a little bit on telly, he's a fucking communicator. Mm. So when he's when he's finishing sets, as everyone's running up to set the defensive line, he's telling people, okay, we've got this and this, and he's helping to set the defense. Then he's setting the next attacking set, and he's getting guys in place for two, three tackles ahead. South had none of that. Mm. Absolutely none of that. Um, now, I'm going to ask a fucking favour here because I don't want to sound like an ignorant cunt. Um, we've got somebody that I haven't seen in the Facebook group before. Right. And your name is spelled T-E-K-I-A-O-R-A. So I'm going to ask you how I pronounce that just in case I've got to read it out in the future. And I'm not going to try and be rabs and fucking rudely butcher your name. Um, but commented on the game that, uh, fuck, this is painful to watch. So I'm also assuming you're a South fan. Mm-hmm. Yep. So if you can tell us how to pronounce your name, because we are going to test shit out of you for the remainder of the season. <laughs> um, thank you very much. Welcome aboard. Uh, Stephen said, easily my favourite thing about Reynolds going to the Broncos is the total disarray it's left South in. Mm. Uh, Lachlan, good win from the Broncos against a bottom eight side that showed a lot of heart, but just need an experienced halfback. <laughs> I hope this game helps Payne Haas see he's not worth a million. And some of those dollars can go towards keeping Herbie at Brisbane. Yeah, Herbie's playing well. Uh, Todd said, look, I haven't done a Dragons and Port Grand Final tickets, but I may have looked at accommodation. (laughs) Kevin (laughs) said, as a one-eyed Broncos fan, we should not be hyping that up against any good team tonight. We get put down hard. Both sides had horrendous ball control, but as Jay says, a win's a win. Do you guys think that? I I thought the Broncos were were good enough. I I didn't have that thought. Did you? The thing, the thing that, yeah, I didn't think the Broncos were particularly bad. I mean, they, like they were helped ably by there was how many of South, the tries for the Broncos came from like you know South dropping it or you know yeah, that sort of yeah, pseudo yeah. intercept mm-hmm. you know and that, and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, like I don't think the Broncos were. No, I thought, I don't, I thought you know I think Broncos fans should be pretty fucking happy. Also, you were saying Glennie before but that um, you know, like it's probably saving like you know Kevy you know, or extending Kevy's coaching career by. You know, just through and Adam Reynolds, just through his actions. Mm. Mm. One thing I will say, and I don't know if it's real or if it's an accident, but Kevy is actually like the slow way that he's bringing like Cobo through, yeah, yeah, and not pushing him to full back and stuff. You know, like I, I think that's actually you know benefiting Smart. massively. Yeah, benefiting Cobo, Cobo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I and ultimately, I suppose, benefiting Kevy. Yeah. yeah. I, I think the, the smartest thing that he's done is not buy into the hype that was around him. And, and yeah. you know, it's a bit like the Ricky Stewart thing at Canberra with Xavier Savage with him saying, you know, hmm. I, I don't, you know, he's not ready for first grade. And yeah. Cobo is obviously athletically gifted and, and yep. He's, yep. He's, a, he's a fantastic talent. But some of... Some of the errors that young players make as they find their way in first grade can be sort of nullified, so to speak, on the wing by the players around them far, far more than making glaring errors at fullback. Yeah, that's it. Mm. Yeah, Yeah. how many times have you seen a young fullback comes in and their trajectory is on the the steep rise Mm. and they're a media darling and they're this and they have one of those games? Yep. You know, just one of those games that every fullback has in them. It's um, it's not even that one game. It's when teams realise, okay, let's test him out mentally for the next month or six weeks. Yeah, that's it. And the coach keeps playing them there, and their and they confidence is fucking back. shot, yeah, and they never come it. back from it. Yeah, exactly. Like Dane, like Dane Laurie. 
<laughs> Bad example, but I appreciate what you're trying to do. Oh, mate, shocking. On to the next one. The uh, Canberra Raiders 14 defeated the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs 4 in Canberra. The uh, Raiders tries to Whitehead and Frawley. Croker mm-hmm. with a conversion and two penalty goals, defeating the Bulldogs 4, a solitary try to Matt Burton, unconverted. Mm. Much needed win for the Raiders to try and start building some momentum around, you know, what's been a, a pretty a pretty ordinary season for them so far. Um, albeit the Dogs didn't have the benefit of the Gus influence at training again and, and went back to their old ways and... I yeah. felt like the I felt like the Raiders had the dogs measure throughout, as you would expect on paper. I feel like the Raiders are probably a a better side, um, although the Bulldogs have some some big names. But um, yeah, I, I don't know that you could read too much into the Raiders' win, other than the fact that they they needed a win and they got one. Yeah, that's it. It it strikes me that the where the the dogs have made all of these big acquisitions, and you know the the, the biggest two are coming next year. Um, their forwards just still seem to be playing that three or four year old style of rugby league. Like even even TPJ, who who was a you know very damaging forward, obviously early on in his career with Brisbane, he's still playing that whole okay hit up eight nine ten post contact meters every tackle, and that's fantastic. You know, obviously it's a territorial game, but. It's really easy once the momentum's been stopped for two guys to wrap the ball up and just essentially, you know, shepherd him to where he's going to go. Okay, great. The referee says held. By the time they've done that, the defensive line's set up. Surely that comes down to coaching. You know? Yeah, hundred percent it does. Because he's he's got the potential physically and and what we've seen through, you know, the the better games that he had yeah. when he was at Brisbane, and. <laughs> How, but, how do you, you say you this? Turn that around. Potentially, he could do the same sort of damage, probably not as consistently and, and for as many minutes as Taumalolo does for the Cowboys. But but you look at look at Penrith and you look at Melbourne and you look at like their forwards behave. Mm. It is run as fast as you can as contact is initiated. You control your drop to the ground, and you are rising to your feet as fast as you fucking can. That is the way that a forward pack dominates in in the game yeah. in its current guys. Absolutely. And you know, TPJ and Vaughan and those guys, they're just again, they're not doing it. They're all playing like it was four years ago where where the the wrestle was in and, and turning around and crab walking somebody eight meters was an effective use of a prop's time. Mm. Which again comes down to coaching. Hundred percent. Some down. would say they don't have a very good coach. What would you say, Nathan? Well, yeah, that, yeah. Oh, look, I, I, th- I think that uh, that you'd be hundred percent right there, Glenny. I agree with you every way. I couldn't, and I couldn't possibly expand on the point any further. You know, you've said it all. <laughs> think about this game. This was really like you got you, you got two two sides that have these tropes about them. The Raiders can score a couple of points and then can't hold on to a lead when it counts. Mm-hmm. The Bulldogs this year, particularly. Defense is, defense is pretty good. Completion's very good. Can't score points. Yeah. And so it was just the ultimate combination for the scoreline that we got. Like, mm. the Raiders look like that they, they'd sort of close the game. I mean, they had enough possession to win 10 games in the first half and, like, good field position, so many dogs' errors and shit. And it, they still they had a reasonable lead. It's, it's definitely a favorable lead as, as well. Yep. And then the dogs got that try with Burton when he sort of muscled his way over. And... um. I think if it was a better side, <laughs> like they had that opportunity where Addo Car could have scored as well mm, yep. after that. Like I think it was just if they it was probably a, a could side have come that back and could, got them. that could yeah. score points, they could have because when they scored that try to make it uh, what was it like fourteen four or whatever, they had to like that was about twenty minutes to go, I think. Yeah. Yep. So there was plenty of time Heaps for of them time. to go. Fuck, ten points is not enough. But the the main problem is that the dogs just can't generate points. Yeah. And that was ultimately, and if unless the team they're playing are having a fucking Barry. Yep. How about how about Dufty's effort on the Frawley dummy? Yeah, yeah, that was bad. Which is a fantastic yeah. segue into the socials. Joshua, he said Dufty couldn't tackle a parked car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there, there, there and that was, that was a, really bad. 
you, you take the man with the ball at all costs in that situation. Yeah. It's fucking yeah. fullback 101. He got. Yep. He, yep. Not only did he go for the dummy, he didn't get the guy that the dummy was su- supposedly being thrown to, let yeah. alone the guy that held onto the fucking ball. Yeah, so, fucking hell. Yeah, you have to, you have to, you have to pick, pick, a, pick a guy and take him. And I mean, it's yeah. obviously the ball carrier. Exactly. You know, that's it. You're I mean, you can really. On the- on the side, the pass is going from. And yeah. You take the fucking ball carrier. Like mm. it's, yeah. 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 Uh, and then Liam, you might clip it or something. And yeah. Yeah, that's it. Liam said blue and green should never be seen, including in this boring game. Ouch. Uh, Russ said if you watch Barrett's non verbal responses on screen to his team mistakes, he sheds responsibility and invokes blame. Then, if you compare his reactions to another, maybe belly aches, where he owns the accountability of each on field action. You can easily predict the outcome on the ladder. Now, this sort of stuff fascinates the fuck out of me. But I struggle to see how sitting in your coach's box, screaming, oh, for fuck's sake, oh, for fuck's sake, oh, for fuck's sake, is accepting any sort of accountability. <laughs> I feel like yeah. I feel like players being murdered for making mistakes in Melbourne would be uh, some, some way of allocation of blame in some way, wouldn't yeah. it? <laughs> like... Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure in video sessions on Tuesday or whatever. You after fucking a game, useless cunt. <laughs> even when they win by fucking seventy. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure that there are people that get fucking reamed for like, defensive there, decisions they may have made that lead there, to there's the a one reason. try scored against yeah. them. There's a reason that the last Storm player to have twins was forced to name them drawn and quartered. <laughs> like fucking hell. <laughs> Like, say, but look, yeah, like I, the, the accountability happens in the in the the weeks between game, in the preparation and, and in the, yeah, the analysing of the games that have you uh, know that have taken place. However, Russ, please fucking hit us with a post in the group and give us your thoughts as to what those differences actually are. How, what is yeah. it that makes you think that old sexy eyes is is pushing blame, and what is it that makes you think that Bellamy? Um, is is taking it? Uh, you could have used a great example, somebody like Ivan, who um, you know absolutely fucking shining light of the game, blows kisses to even people that hate him to show them how much he loves them. So. When he can be fucked showing up, uh, Danny. <laughs> he said. So the problem for the Raiders is not the fade; it's whiten. Well, yes, not giving away fucking seventy eight, seven tackle sets. <laughs> Because you fucking <laughs> boot a grubber into the fucking fourth row of a grandstand <laughs> tends to help. Uh, and Andrew, you said, at least we learned that the only cure for a Faden is a Naden. There you go. <laughs> uh, you're a poet. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Right. The second Friday game. The Parramatta Eels, 22, defeat the Penrith Panthers, 20 at Penrith. Uh, the Eels tries to Gutherson. Marnie, Madison, and Dylan Brown. Moses, three conversions from four attempts. The Panthers, 20, came through tries to Dylan Edwards, Spencer Lanew, and a double to Talon May. Cleary, two of four conversions, and a fucking horrible attempt at two-point field goal. That's it. Um, fantastic victory by Penrith. Um, <laughs> ob- well, you know, obviously the... the there Here was the fucking gap. Yeah. The, 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 the incident, incident where Parramatta with, won the game. No, the incident where their fucking trainer <laughs> was illegally distracting Nathan during a conversion. Get um, professional, block it out. Yeah. It's, well, no, not at all. Follow the fucking rules. Simple as that. Simple as that. Look, I mean, all, all I know is there, there are people like you know Michael Jordan who would who wouldn't uh, be distracted by these things and just fucking sink the crucial basket, and then there are people like LeBron James who would probably flop and um, complain that there was someone standing in the front row. No. Jack Nicholson was oh, fucking oh. <laughs> was poking and, his tongue out at him, <laughs> and, and Nathan hasn't said a fucking word because he is you know Michael Jordan, uh, but others see others of us who aren't so so godly as Nathan. Um, and there is an official investigation in which Parramatta should probably be kicked out of the comp um, <laughs> just for being absolute fucking scumbag losers. Back to the incident where um, Parramatta won the game. No, they didn't though. Yeah. It was two points. Well, that was, that that, was the a, game was that already was the game was already won at that point, Glenny. Um, this was the last ditch attempt to get into the golden point. Yeah. Also, um, no, he absolute, said he was distracted taking conversion. Absolutely, absolutely fucking. Oh, that's right. It was the conversion, wasn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. right. 
Yeah, the Psylon conversion, he hasn't been hitting that well anyway since he come back. Ab- absolutely fucking genius masterstroke by Ivan to not only um, take himself out of the equation, but to fucking give Cam Seraldo COVID. Um, it, essentially, he's playing fucking 4D chess and he's doing mental altitude training with this team. He not only took himself out of the equation, he took the assistant coach out as well. So essentially, there was nobody up there running the show, um, and the guys were cheated out of a win by a dodgy fucking Parramatta trainer. So it's very, um, it's very reminiscent actually of that post that, from the Facebook group for the last game. When you talk about coaches not taking any accountability, I mean, he's, Ivan saw this L coming, so he decided to not show up so he could do the, tra- you know, so he could do what Gusty with Trenton, you know, like no, not at all, yeah, not at all, going there he- and and uh, and so now, so now, you know, Ivan's walking around fucking. You know the the world of entertainment saying, "Well, it wasn't a loss on my record. I wasn't See, there. What, what you're it wasn't doing, me. what you're doing, I didn't is coach projecting. Him. What you're doing is projecting. Those who will keep their own slate clean at all to... costs think that, that that others will do so. Essentially, what Ivan did was saw that they were not going to drop another fucking game until they got to the business end of the season, and it would have been it would have been an inhumanely impossible task to keep them focused for an entire fucking undefeated season to stay sharp at the business end. Stay sharp at the business end. So he has manufactured a loss that will allow them to regroup before they face um, proper rugby league competition, that of the Melbourne Storm. Uh, And, like, I am so fucking happy for Parramatta supporters that they were the lucky ones that got to have Ivan's manufactured loss. Um, congratulations. I really hope you enjoy it. Um, I've got to say, I, 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 I ran, I ran uh, all every episode of, of uh, This Week in League since, uh, since Stepdad came on board. I ran it through AI to generate, <laughs> to generate his response to this game. And it Paul wasn't was... actually exactly word for word. Yeah, he, he did add some new wrinkles with with that that tremendous fucking diatribe of bullshit that we just listened to. <laughs> the the Great, algorithm, the, the, al- the algorithm is evolving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, this is like this. Oh, this is obviously going to be crucial for it. I mean, like, <laughs> you know, it's a massive learning opportunity. <laughs> oh, Glennie, tell us, tell us something real. Look, we got listeners of this show that are Parramatta fans, and they deserve to <laughs> to receive their credit. Look, I thought it was I thought it was one of the best games of the season so far by um, two high quality teams. Um, ultimately, come down to you know Cleary kicks at a very high percentage if he if he makes those which he normally would. Um, the results so, the re- results different, but um, so are you, are you saying, Glenn, that in this situation? I thought it was my turn to talk. No, no, but I'm just I just want to clarify. You're saying. But Parramatta and everything they did was irrelevant, and it wasn't them that won the game. It was Nathan's boot that lost it. Isn't That's it funny yes, that I agree? I agree. Thank you. Even, see, the, yep, even the algorithm's a cunt. <laughs> oh. <laughs> How is that even possible? Um, it's a huge result for Parramatta, um, and I think it's potentially the thing that gives them the last liver of confidence to to get them over the hump and put them on that that top tier of teams potentially. Um, and I think in contrast, whilst Penrith's record over the last couple of seasons at home was was impressive, I don't think the loss does a great deal to them. I think they roll on regardless. But it's potentially huge for Parramatta and it'll be interesting to see how they, they go on over the next three or four weeks with um, with that win under their belt. Yeah. Look, I know they've had their, their outs and there's been fucking constant discussion about you know the the coach putting his kid in the side. Dylan um, Dylan Brown surely put paid to that. One hundred percent. No, one hundred percent. He had a fucking he 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 basically gave the 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 Jacob Arthur truth as he got he he fucking gave gave the response that yeah. he was need to forever silence that fucking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but can you can you think in recent memory of a team that can take out the top two favourites of the competition? so close to each other, both at, you know, close to full strength, thereabouts, but lose to the West Tigers. 
I think it, yeah, I, I think that's well, the thing with Para is that, and we talk about the ceilings and um, yeah. of teams at their best, they're a fucking phenomenal football team. Yeah, but mentally, the drop that they can have mentally, as shown against the Tigers and and a couple of other games. Um, the way they got absolutely slaughtered in Darwin the week before. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, shows that over the course of a season, that's why it gets down to the business end and they're not on the same level as the Melbournes and the yeah. Penrith. Yeah. And until they bridge that gap, that's how it's going to be. And that's why I say this result, potentially, if if they can yeah. use it to get over that mental hump, it could be huge for them. Yeah, okay. Okay. It was interesting to see, like, there was a period of time there, like, it was probably like 15 minutes when, like, Penrith were legitimately rattled as well when, when yeah. Parramatta got those two tries pretty much back-to-back. That's and it. And then you're seeing, you're seeing the way that they're, they're, they were failing to, you know, re- regroup their defensive line and were actually yep. looking, like, panicked. And, you know, yeah, so it was, uh, you know, Parramatta Eels maybe gave some, uh, you know, just gave some video to some other teams as yeah, well. Yeah, look, I, I still think, regardless, you have to be fucking good to beat Penrith. Regardless. Yeah, oh yeah, and this is the thing with but, the rules with the rules the way they are this year as well. I think that you know it rewards like a high completion, mm. yep. error low error game. Yep. And then if you've got team if you've got talented players in your team and you can manage uh, manage like a, an equal footing in terms of like errors and and completions and things like that, then you know you give yourself the position. Then when in the sixtieth minute, you know, and if you can take yep. your opportunities, then anyone can take yeah. anyone out. Yeah, it's it also proved to me as well that. Even Penrith at eighty percent, there's a large chunk of the competition that can't go with them, even if they're at seventy five yeah. to eighty percent, which is yeah. fucking amazing. Well, we we saw that the week before with the Titans. Penrith were mm. fucking woeful. Yeah, the game. So, um, Anthony said this game is as good as the final last year. These two clubs put on a cracking game. Can't knock Gutho in this one, but f- both forward packs have been awesome. Uh, John said, I didn't care if we won tonight. I just wanted an 80-minute performance we could hang our hats on. Well, fuck me, I got both. Awesome. Carsten said, how shit are the Panthers? <laughs> Even the Cowboys could put 30 on the Eels. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. Um, up the fucking postage on his membership this year, mate. Uh, Matt. Fuck. I'm going to fucking have to. Anyway, we take a fucking we take a big <laughs> loss sending him stuff every year, let me tell you. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, Not cheap. Matt. Matt. Not cheap to send a fucking, uh, to fucking to the home of Nazi gold. Uh, aren't you fucking invading Ukraine or something at the moment, cunt? Fucking Jesus. Uh, Matt, no, I've stepped uh, in to pick a side for the first time ever. Really? Yeah, they, they, I think I think they're lining up. They want to join fucking. They want to join NATO and everything now. <laughs> 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 These army, the, the army knows they do nothing. <laughs> 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 Molotov cocktails do not have the corks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, Matt, Para beat Penrith. West beat Para. Therefore, Wests are better than Penrith. Fucking hell. I can, Rugby I can, league maths. Oh, I concur. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, you, done. And you'll get the, you get the chance. It's you get done. the chance to... <laughs> You get the chance to have that theory assessed as well during Origin with your illegitimate joy match. Oh, I can't yeah, wait. Yeah. Do you know what it is, though? That That's fucking no risk or reward for us. Like, if you beat our fucking Origin depleted team, like, so you fucking should. Yeah. Are you, every, are you talking about every, the Tigers? Yeah. So we should but, do nothing, mate. Are you but kidding? every time we fucking pump you, you with a reserve us? grade squad. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's no risk or reward for you, not for Glenny. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Ash, <laughs> Ash said, if you're going to fade badly in the second half of the season, you need to chalk up wins like this first. Hashtag <laughs> stare into my crystal fall. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, it. Love the creativity. Okay, moving to Saturday, the Mighty Manly Seagulls 36 to feed the West Tigers 22 at Brookvale. Sold out crowd. The tries as follows. Um, Kristen Tupolodu, Daly Cherry Evans, Garlic Sauce, Josh Aloye, a double to Ben Trebojevic, and a double to the uh, best fullback in the game, Ruben Garrick. Um, Garrick, four of seven <coughs> conversions, the Tigers, 22. <laughs> I'm, never, I'm never getting off Garrick Island, <laughs> baby. <laughs> it's I live there by fucking, <laughs> I got a fucking... I got a Steen with a face painted on it. <laughs> I call it Rubes. You're jamming your fucking tiny cock into a coconut. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, no, I've got, I told you, I've got a fucking Steve. I've got a Steve in court. <laughs> I was going to say, it's a weird manly <laughs> fucked up version of Castaway. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Tigers tries to Luke Garner, Tyrone Peachy, Oliver Gilda, and Joe Offerhangaway Hastings three conversions. Lenny, you can have the floor first, mate. Look, the Tigers competed. They completed at a reasonably high rate and, and did their best to fight back after going well behind in the first half. Um, they didn't cope well with the... Stefano sin binning, which I think was fair. I, I, I think he he should have went, and rightfully so he did. He um, was the he was the unlucky recipient of of you know the you know, misdeeds from others. But, sure, yeah, but you know he was he was also the guy at the wrong fucking time, and 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 away he yeah, went, and yeah. we didn't cope at, with that well at all. Um, but they did in the second half. They did rally and, and try and make it. You know, got within. Six points at one stage, and I think they were just in the end done in by a few touches of class from some class players in the opposition, and um, we're just not we're just not at that level, um, which is which is obvious. But um, at it was only it was only last season where the Tigers go behind eighteen nil at half time. It's it's probably fifty or fucking sixty by the time the all said and done. Um, whereas this one, they they showed, a, as Vossi kept saying, uh, they showed uh, plenty of spirit. And they, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't hate the fact that they kept trying, but they were they were outclassed. Well, is, Vo- is Vossi a Tigers fan? Because fuck, he loves them. Fuck, he was in love with them in this game. <laughs> It's driving me fucking crazy, and I understand. Like you know, I was, I had the game on, uh, and I was listening to the commentary, and I was, and I was saying to S, I was like, I was like, I'm fucking so glad that Manly aren't aren't at this stage. I'm so glad we're back, you know, back towards the top sides because when the commentators start talking like this, like the pity, yeah. and like they're yeah. talking about how great you're going, yeah. like I I, I fucking little, hate that. It's you insulting. Know, <laughs> pump your ties up when. Just, you know the good teams are just fucking slashing holes in them. Uh, would you, yeah. as a Tigers fan, I don't need you, you don't have to concede this, but would you say that that was like the best game Tyrone Peachy has played in fucking years? <laughs> well, it was voided. He was he was legitimate. He was legitimately dangerous, thrown into yeah. a position. You know, like thrown in early and had to sort of spend his time in the centre. He, he and- did some good things, and and I think that's one thing. The fact that and and Jay will attest to this. The fact that he didn't have any peachy moments was the thing I was most surprised yeah. by. Because even as he was going well, I was like, "He's going to fuck this up. This he's going to fucking undo like he all legitimately that. had. A, he legitimately had a good game. Yeah, definitely. This is the conundrum with Tyrone Peachy, right? You put him put him in the centres, and he spent plenty of time in the centres at Penrith, and he is a fantastic attacking option especially in broken field or situations where you're chasing kicks or bombs or, or yeah, something passes like hit that. the ground and shit like that's that. That's it, mm. you know? Yep. Amazing. Um, and that's where he has those fucking peachy highlight moments. He's not great as a link man to a winger, like in a smooth backline motion that's catch and pass mm. at speed. He's not terrible, but he's not fantastic. Where he Service, is terrible, though. He's serviceable. Defensively. Defensive, oh, serviceable defensively yeah. in the centres. Mm. Right? Yeah, they, and, that, and defensively is where where the, the problems really happen. Mm. With you know the you know both both of uh, Ben Turbo's tries, and you know Christian Christian was put away by Ben Turbo for another try, and the try that Daly scored, <laughs> like that screenshot yeah. where there's where fucking there's where five tigers, Cola is, and Cola Cola is, is there's six ti- six tigers right like three on each side of him, and if you were to say oh yeah. He created a break that fucking resulted in a length of the field try from mm. that that position. And you go, wow! There's a lot. I of will say there was there, a couple too. of glimpses just in that that movement from Kohler there. Yep. There was one point where he legit fucking two of us as Sheck teleported, and mm. I can't even remember who the Tigers player was that was just just didn't get a fucking finger on him, and he was twenty five centimeters yep. away. <laughs> it, was, it was ridiculous. Yep. So you can see, you know, but, I hope he's not. And and I would imagine if a club can bring a player through without the hype train being derailed, um, it's probably mm-hmm. Manly. But um, yeah, he is he is fucking amazing. 
He's had to, he's yeah. had to be pretty patient too to get his, his and same for Christian as well. Like mm. Tupolotu, I mean, like he had to he it was injury it was injury to t- Tommy that brought him in on the wing on the other side of the field, and now he's kept it over you know over the other side. And I think that he's going to maintain that position. I don't think Jason Saab gets back in the side except through injury, because the 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 carries off uh, after kicks and like the, he's mm. like what well, he's not like he's not like he's Brian Tyler, but he's Jason Saab gets fucking killed the second he touches the ball because he's just so lan- you know lanky and. You know, and tall. He's just easy to leverage over. Mm. Christian's not that guy, and he's 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 fast enough. He finishes well as a winger, and um, I'll tell you, Ben Turbo. I mean, even though he was in the back row for this game, his play was mostly he was sort of playing mostly you know he down that right hand side. And so you know, and uh, when he was setting up tries, you know, sort of, you know from center, and he, like now he looks like he's ready. He defended well, um, and yeah, is and he like, a center he, or a back rower? By, by choice. What's that, that's that's the thing. He's he's been he's been he's been both, and I think he's, he basically, you know, when he's younger, he was you know he's he was yeah you know, probably big for his you know big for his age, so he could easily handle the back row. And even now, he can. Even though you look at him, I mean, he's like mm. about the same sort of physique, and and you know, slightly shorter than Tommy, but like about the same sort of physique. So, um, I see his future in the in the centres, and I think that um, if the side gets back to the lineup that they you know that they should have been because this week there's again we only scored thirty six points we didn't we didn't score thirty eight, so we can't call it the flu game. But it was fucking close. It, it was a flu game for the side. I mean, earlier in the week, Josh Schuster had his twenty first, and it was a fucking COVID super spreader event, and there were players sick through the week, and it was like PCRs and shit every day. Like, are they gonna do they have COVID or not? Are they gonna play? Hamoli was um, didn't have COVID, but he was sick, and that's why he was pulled out on game day. There was a number of other guys in the side that were just that were sick. Like Kohler was one of them too. Fucking amazingly, like. The, he was he was sick as a dog in that game, and he still fucking went all right. And that's why I think they might have sort of faded in and out of the game. And then when the game you know sort of tightened up again, then they just got back to it and just you know stretched it out almost instantly, you know, not giving the Tigers a sniff. Um, love the fucking sold out. Love the sold out suburban grounds, and I fucking love the you know that they yeah, putting some grandstands and things on these suburban grounds. The atmospheres are fucking amazing. I mean, they need to add more capacity, maybe like another 10,000 just to make it, you know, sort of you know, give them about 25,000 capacity or something like that. But it's fucking great. And the fans responded and um, the Tigers fans, well, did they fucking respond later that night? Balmain's Leagues Club gets fucking <laughs> set on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Can't have a murder if one like, side's burnt to the ground. <laughs> Tigers, Tigers fans reacting reacting poorly after a patch of good form. Jesus. They have a month of good form, and all of a sudden they're fucking burning the place down again. <laughs> Jesus nice. Christ! But um, um, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I was getting ready to read the socials. Oh, okay. I was just going to say again. Like, I mean, we know that. I mean, we probably talk about it on Wednesday with the news, but yeah, you know, with Fozzie signing with the Titans. Um, you know, we, we knew it was always going to be like a two-year thing and did not expect to extract so much football out of his body at the age he is. You know, it's 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 incredible that we've got so many games out of him and he's still playing like a fucking man-possessed. Um, Daily fucking fantastic as well. And and I'll tell you, Josh Alloy, eh? what the fuck happened? What was the fallout there with the Tigers? That he just decided that was it, I had enough of them. Was He wasn't a magic guy or what? Oh, like, I, all I remember is that the Tigers was... something It was played out in the, the socials, lawn, remember? Mowing the lawn or some fucking... No, yeah, yeah, it, but that was, was sort of... That was, that was, after, it, that was yeah. after it kicked off, though. It, you know? it, was just, and, it was just that the club itself was so fucking unprofessional. It was that it had no proper like rehab staff. Um, it, everything was run poorly. It was disorganised and he wanted out. And he did that thing we players do. They say they want to release. They say they've got a deal elsewhere. And they just assume mm-hmm. clubs will let them go. Yep. And that, that was when, from memory, was close to the time that Ivan was going. And what was it I after? Think it, was, it might have been after that. No, because his first anyway, season was last year. But, so, yeah. Oh, the, so, so Pasco did that thing where he tries to fucking prove that I'm a fucking man. No one I'm will an alpha. push. No one will push me around. You I'm ain't alpha. Man. You ain't alpha. <laughs> and, and he was like, he he will stay. He's under contract with us, and he will stay even if he is mowing the grass. That's right. Because I'm a man. Yeah. 
Um, that and was that's what I said on Twitter, point. like Tigers fucked up twice because I mean the Brookvale service mm. the fucking tremendous. <laughs> Thank you again, I'll show you LA. Um, you but yeah, that, and, and what you, your your summation of the the how it all broke down and everything is is, cor- is correct. Joe. I'm just wondering like what the catalyst was like. It was that the club was, was poor. Like a match thing or no? Nah, yeah. It was the club. Yeah, he just got an offer and he wanted to win. I guess. <laughs> I mean, like, that's like most players like, that underperforming yeah. clubs, I suppose. But that's yeah, it. I'm yeah, very very happy with the the flu game, and I can't wait to see us start to get some players back over the coming weeks. Uh, Mitch, he said, I don't like it when my parents fight. Mm. You're not fighting. I, don't, I was going to comment, but I thought we got you know we do a podcast, we can talk about it. There's no, it's just fucking football, man. Fuck, if you, <laughs> if you can see Danny's face right now. I can I can see his face. I can't see nice your face. I'm trying fucking... to listen. I'm trying to listen to you cunts talk because I can't see your faces. So I'm I'm concentrating, waiting uh, waiting to see what fucking bullshit. Look, I'll tell you what. To prove off. to prove to prove there's no fighting, let me share an exchange with you that I had with Glennie <laughs> after the game. I texted him. It's a particularly emotional he's fucking, day. He's, yeah, he's one of, he's one of my best mates. So I, so I, I texted him and I just said, "Sorry, mate, you were mostly always in the fucking game, mate." Yeah, so just, you know, I'm just trying to bridge the gap. I'm not gloating or anything. And then he replied, they competed. So there's that. Expected a loss, got one. Don't apologize to me, you pretentious cunt. <laughs> and then so I replied, I wasn't apologizing. Fucking it was brilliant. like, I'm sorry your dad died. Or I'm sorry we won the trade with Hastings, Joshy, Marty and Kelma. Now go get a digger and scoop out your salty cunt. <laughs> See, we don't fight. That's not fighting. <laughs> it's all love. About? It's, it's just the best. It's all love. In fact, I think I saw exactly that same quote on a Mother's Day card. <laughs> Not from me, you didn't. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that, that, that quote on a Mother's Day card that you fucking drew yourself, Glenny. <laughs> That's um, it. It was, it was cards by Blakely dot com. Yeah. Was the, um, they only have one card. It's a Mother's Day card. It's kind of abusive. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Very niche Actually, content. But yeah. <laughs> that's exactly it. That Mother's Day card was fucking non-existent. She got a grandmother's I, card because my wife is a fucking lovely human being and doesn't want to fucking. But I didn't didn't want to sign your name because I knew you wouldn't want me to. So I sent a card from the boys because it's the right that, thing to do. That, that's low key psycho. What? I'm going to point out that your son's name's absent here. <laughs> um, finally, on that one, Josh, he said, I don't know if it's complacency because I've always been ahead or if it's just bad defensive reads, but Manly seem to have a lot of holes for Tigers to run through. They did enough to win, but teams at the top with more rounded attack and defense would have easily beaten Manly. Do you oh, think there are a lot, I, of, a lot of line breaks or a lot of opportunities the Tigers oh, didn't capitalize One line on? break I do want to point out is fucking Garner who has never run like yeah, that in his, think... every game he's ever played for the Tigers until he's fucking saying that he's going to Penrith, all of a sudden he runs like Usain fucking Bolt. <laughs> yeah, I think that I think that one was that that one was like just it was that was just flat out disrespect and I'm fucking glad it happened because it's a good learning moment for fucking some of the players because while Morgan Harper was on that side of the field and had his man covered, I don't know if it was like a lack of trust by Garrick and jamming in, or if it was just disrespect, like we'll just try and fucking jam in and stop it here, and then and then got out fucking and then got out you know beaten by the, the the ball to the player on the outside, but like it was just that was just so disrespectful of the Tigers from from Garrick particularly to not just like there was no overlap or anything it was just just fucking man just man up and nothing happens like yeah. to have some you know that was just no respect for the tigers unfortunately and then also probably as well like i think tommy looks he looked a bit underdone as well in the fitness after being out for a month and and also like he was on the other side of the fucking field so you know, I question his positional play on that particular one, which is another disrespect thing like no one thought that was on except for fucking garner i think <laughs> nice next game Okay, um, the Sydney Roosters, 44, defeated the Gold Coast Titans, 16, up in Mackay, um, the site where they got slaughtered by Manly in the finals. Um, the Roosters, 44, a hat-trick to James Tedesco, a double to Joseph Suwali, a double to Daniel Tupo, and a try to uh, Takayaho. Walker, five conversions, Momorowski a conversion, defeating the Titans, 16, tries to Bo Firma, Sam Lasone, Herman Essay, Toby Sexton, two conversions, and uh, that is it. I think Tedesco had one of those games where he did everything. And by everything, I mean he ran at the Titans' left side defense three times <laughs> yeah. for three tries. 
They were that was sometimes whole desco works. The whole desco thing works sometimes if the other team refuses to tackle. <laughs> the, the tries that they scored on that side of the field was so fucking soft, and that defense was so lame. Yeah. Some of look some of the things the Titans have done at various stages of this season just is in complete contrast to the absolute catastrophic fucking defence that they put together in this game at times. Yep. It was fucking woeful. Yep. And the Roosters almost knew, even when the Titans tried to mount a bit of a uh, – and make a bit of a game of it, the the Roosters knew, okay, we'll just get the ball and then we'll just run to that side again. And yeah. that will just fall over the line and no one will tackle us. It's fucking gross. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Just literally, they were running like they were back. The only team I've seen defend like that is the Tigers. The team's it, it, five meters out and they're backpedaling. I don't <laughs> think it was. To yeah, the that same was like level. Tigers. In, that was Tigers in the trials though too. That wasn't like even Tigers aren't defending like that mm. in the season like it, proper. It, it wasn't at that level, but it was reminiscent of the the effort put in by Newcastle last week. Yeah. You yes. Know, I, just that. Well. Complacency, like there's no, I, I can't think of another word for it. It's just dead set complacency. Mm. Um, yeah, but it's like complacency. Like complacency is usually like something that's based on, you know, it's like there's there's something at the foundation of it that, you know, exists that's real. But I mean, the Titans are f- very fucking disappointing. I mean, they had yeah. they had a couple of a couple of games where they could kind of hang their hat on scoring tons of points versus the um the Eels in yep. the first four rounds. Yep. But man, like this was the team that was supposed to take the next step this year after another year under Holbrook. Mm. They got themselves, they clawed their way to the finals and this was the year they're going to take that next step, but they are yeah. fucking putrid. Yeah, that's it. I thought the Roosters just controlled every aspect of the game and, and as I said, the Titans tried to make a game of it in the second half and the Roosters never really needed to get out of third gear. Just, no, no, it was they a didn't. Weird and game like, can you to watch. The, vi- like, the, just the video no session intensity. for the Roosters through the week though would have been an absolute bloodbath. Yeah, after yeah. that loss to the after that loss to the Dogs. Sure. And look, if there's anything that's going to wake you up, it's going to be losing to fucking Trent yeah. Barrett coach sides. I guess so, it? but it was still a weird game to watch because I don't know that the Roosters coming out and played with this huge amount of intensity after being you know humbled by fucking the Dogs of all teams the week prior. Yep. But maybe that was because they obviously realised fairly early on they didn't fucking need to. <laughs> it was yeah, it was a strange game to watch. Yep. Certainly fucking yep. was. Um, socials on that one. Uh, Stuart said some players ran at other players wearing different shirts. Some got through and made numbers on the screen. One team did it more than the others. Review <laughs> done. <laughs> uh, Liam summed up every fucking game ever played he said so Tedesco heard the rumours about his New South Wales fullback position being in doubt lucky Garrick was playing out of position today oh Jesus mm. fucking cross <laughs> I'll tell you, like, on a serious note See, though, I told you you're hearing it more and more Glenny <laughs> on, on, on a serious note the whole the Roosters do well when Tedesco hogs the fucking ball worries me for state of origin because that that tends to be now the un, the only mode he knows how to play in. Yeah, like, that's you right. When and he tried that shit. He was doing it last year. Yeah, but the thing is, he wasn't allowed. He wasn't given the amount of ball to do it exactly by, like, by Cleary and Luai because they were giving it to Tommy to do his thing. Yeah. But then you come to game three when you've got these junior partners coming in, knowing they're only going to be there for one game. Yeah, and not being talented either. Yeah, Mitchell Moses. Um. And then yeah, and then so so then then Tedesco's like, oh fuck, the team's racked by injuries. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Paul opens the thing, yeah, with the S for fucking Squid Game on his fucking shirt, <laughs> and, then, and then I'm going into action to fucking <laughs> to save the team single handedly, like I'm doing for my club team. Fucking hell, yeah. Um, Daniel, so the Titans' defense is just horrible. That's a fucking better review. Uh, and Riggs. He said the only team out there stopping the Roosters from scoring were the Roosters. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah, it was ordinary. Next game. 
Okay, moving on to the North Queensland Cowboys, 36 to feed the Newcastle Knights, 16 up at the Abattoir. The Cowboys tries to Dearden, Holmes, Felt, Talangi, Nanai and Luki. Holmes, 6 from 6 conversions. Newcastle Knights, 16 tries to Dom Young, Jacob Saifidi and Chris Randall with Ponga, 2 of 3 conversions. Newcastle have been blown off the park the two weeks prior to this game and you will say that they, they put in an improved performance and a, and a much better showing in this game, certainly in the first half, right up until they allowed 24 unanswered points from the Cowboys, who just finished well over the top of them and fucking swamped them. Um, and once the Cowboys got on a roll, the Knights went back into their shell, much as they had the, the previous two weeks, and, and the Cowboys finished up playing some pretty good footy, I thought. This was a weird game as well because, I mean, like, for starters, Ponga you know, actually did some of those things that he should be doing for the salary. Like, you know, yeah, he set, set up some tries. He actually wasn't too bad. Like, I mean, this is one of, one of his better games, you know, chiming into attack. And, you know, they engineered themselves a halftime lead. But then the way that the Cowboys got the lead back and ultimately started to make the break on them that they that they maintained and expanded through the rest of the game, it's kind of weird. Like, that one with Chad, that weird, that kick that Chad fucked up. Yeah, it was a complete miss kick, and and yeah, Ponga, yeah, and Ponga grab, should have taken yeah. that on the full. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. Well, there's a bit of that this weekend across all the games. With yes. people shouldn't, you know, shouldn't attacking the ball and whatnot. But um, yeah, and then once the, once the Cowboys shifted back into gear, then they ran away with it again. I don't think they're a top four side, but I mean, they're fucking definitely they're a real team. Their form is real. Yeah, I agree. This season, I mean, their defense is fantastic. And, you know, that's obviously the basis for a lot of good things in the game of rugby league. And, yeah, I, I uh, just think the, the enthusiasm of the, you know, the Tiamalolo finding his mojo again is, is one thing. And then you've got the enthusiasm of guys like Luki and Nanai um, in the in the middle. Um, defensively, I, I feel like they're, they're, they've bonded quite well as a defensive unit. And then on the edges, yep. those yep. guys get well over the advantage line and, and they're, they're fucking hard to handle. But it it also goes to like expanding on the, the what we were talking about before with Adam Reynolds, you know, about how you you just need a a serviceable number seven. Uh, like Chad Townsend, much derided, and he's not even. Close it was a, to, it was a meme him going yeah, up there. Yeah. It was a meme from That's fucking it. like whenever he signed like July or you know you know August or whenever last year. Yeah. I have to say, I it was off, laughing stock material. I for one and we did it too. Fucking, it was like, yeah, yeah. I was I for one was completely charge. wrong about but what yeah, he would bring. Yeah. Also, a part of that was, it wasn't just him, it was the fact that they'd already signed like 47 other yeah. halves yeah. Yeah. To, to their roster. Um, but, but it, it, I guess, goes to show that, that a, a serviceable half, you know, whilst, whilst they are a benefit to a team, they need a base level of involvement from the rest of the team. And, and Chad's last couple of years at Cronulla, it was a fucking mismatch. Who was his fucking partner? Was it Moylan? Was it Johnson? Was he even playing? Was, you know, what forwards were there? What what backs were there? He he wasn't in the best situation at, at Cronulla. And he seems to be in a situation now where that cohesiveness in that team is at an all-time yeah. high. I think he's relishing the the senior party role too with Din. Yeah, I think he's actually legitimately taking him under his wing and and um, and and he's showing him you know some of those ropes in first grade to to bring him along, which yeah. is which is and not I mean, something like I would have given him credit for. Yeah, ten weeks into the season, I'd say that you know it, it was probably a good signing. The Cowboys knew what they were doing when they signed him. They 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 had an idea in their head. I think what they thought they were getting, and he's given it to them. Mm. Yeah, so, exactly. You know, it's uh, and like the, the thing is with bubbles like this, like enthusiasm teams and 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 like just you know, chemistry teams at the moment that are young and the, the pieces have just come together and it's all going well for them. I mean, you know, those bubbles can get popped, but you know, like they're looking fucking, they're looking like a legitimately but, good football team at the moment. I, I, I don't but, think the Cowboys can win the comp, but I'd be very surprised if they didn't make the eight at this stage. Yeah, and and I'm, I'm, I'm certain I'll make the eight. Yeah. I, I like the fact that they're doing it simply. You know, it's not, oh, the Cowboys, they've, un- they've unearthed this one superstar that's fucking set them on a, a trajectory this season or yeah. um, the, they've, they've developed this brand spanking new fucking new play that's 
everyone mm. thinks is an obstruction, but it's not really, and it's catching everyone by surprise. They're just doing the simple things right, yeah. and they're playing with energy, efficiency, and precision. And I think a lot of the credit also has to go to Peyton. He, he copped a fair bit of criticism as they were finding their way earlier in the season, and um, the way he's, you know, whether he's had a change of heart and realised and been man enough to say that he didn't handle the or didn't manage Tal Malolo correctly earlier earlier in the year, um, and he's been man enough to put his hand up and change that internally is one thing. Um, the the form that he's getting out of players, as we've mentioned, Townsend, but also Val Holmes. Um, it's it's, it's also of, the advent of guys with of no name guys like yeah. like Ruben Cotter. Yeah. 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 For example, like, yeah, yeah, nice. opportunity and managing through first grade is, is impre- his ability to do that is impressive. That's it. Yeah, um, Ben says minor premiers put your house on it. Oh, fuck fuck yeah, I love that. I fucking love it. Um, <laughs> Danny, so can someone tell the Knights matches last for eighty minutes, not forty? They weren't even in the lead. O'Brien is trying to get himself fired so far and su- is succeeding in doing so. Uh, Josh said, "I was at the game. Can someone tell me?" Why does Ponga sit 40-plus metres away from the defensive line when they defend on early tackles? Now, here's the thing. Like, we we have been fucking Ponga deriders for a, for a good long while, and not yep. so much about anything he actually does, but just more about what he does versus the, the level of, of admiration and or respect and probably chunk of a salary cap. That and and also gets. what he doesn't do. Exactly. Well, here's the thing. What he doesn't do doesn't matter so much if he's on 400 grand a year. True. You know? um, but more and more and more now, I think people are starting to come around and, exactly as you said, Glennie, see what he doesn't do. And we're starting to get those comments. Oh, fuck, there was a bit of a scuffle and every Newcastle player ran in except him. Now, we know these days that there's not going to be punches thrown. There might be some fucking slappy slaps. Um, but then another one, you know, so far from the defensive line instead of getting himself in there. Uh, Ross, he said, you all questioned me last year when I said the Knights for the last 10 years have been by far the worst team on tackle six at both ends. 24 points to the Cowboys on the sixth tackle last night. I believe Bellamy would have been most disappointed with the power loss about the amount of plays dropping back when Stone scored. Imagine if he coached this mob. Yes, imagine. Imagine if Craig Bellamy coached Newcastle and all fucking laugh at the fucking sad cunts living in that alternate reality. I'll, I'll be able to imagine that as I ride my fucking unicorn. <laughs> there we go. But now, the, Ross, you uh, are right. They fucking suck. Yeah. Now we can talk about Bellamy. Melbourne Storm 42 defeat the Dragons 6. And uh, this is down, down again, again, down at Amy Park in Melbourne. That's where they play all their games. Season. Man. Every, every game, I mean, it's, it's, it's just fucking stats. Uh, the uh, Storm's tries came from a double to Pappy. Uh, Meany, Hughes, Munster, and Nelson's Sofa Sol Minor, and Trent Loyero with tries. Pappy, two conversions. Meany, four conversions. Meany, a penalty goal. Defeating the Dragon six. A try to uh, Remorseless Rapist. And conversion to Zach Lomax. Um, cool. So... This game went exactly as we thought it would. M- Melbourne did Melbourne yeah. things. Correct. Done. Look, I thought the, I, th- I, th- I thought the Dragons actually defended pretty well in the first sort of well, in the first half probably, but in the first twenty minutes particularly, I mean they defended pretty well. But then, yep. yeah, they could That's not it. they could not keep it up. Um, Do you think Munster's no building into the, what? the biggest payday from whoever the fuck he signs with? We talk about contract year players. Yeah, I mean, or is he, he building really into to be a contract year player? Is he building into the absolute biggest fuck you if he signs with the Dolphins or fucking anyone? Both. It what? maybe he signs with Newcastle. I doubt that, but um, maybe yeah, maybe it's both. Yeah. But oh, he's 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 a guy that has a chip on his shoulder at the best of times. But fuck me, he's I don't untouchable think... at the minute. I don't think Melbourne overpay, even for what he is at the moment. Right? I think Melbourne are too good of an operation in terms of their front office to, to all of a sudden go, oh, he's playing unbelievably. And it's a completely unrelated coincidence. This is a contract season. Hmm. This must be how he intends to play all games from here on in. Let's give him lots of money. 
Do you think they just pay him market value? And in which case, what's his market value then? Because I, 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 you know, I, I think he, well, he's a million dollar player. Looking at other million dollar players yeah. in in the comp, he is as valuable to that side as Tommy is to Manly. Well, if you look at some million dollar players, he's a fucking two million dollar player. <laughs> no, no, no. So yeah, again, act, yeah, we're not saying, we're, saying we're talking about the ones that are players, valuable. Yeah. Right? So he he is as valuable to that to to that club as Tommy is. Mm. Um, maybe one day um, he'll be as, as skilled as Nathan is. Um, oh, thanks, mate. Thanks, mate, but I'm not making that much money. Oh, <laughs> I fucking thank wish. God, thank God for you, Nathan. He doesn't exist, but you do, and I'm fucking glad that you do some days. Um, you know, what other million-dollar players are there? So, yeah, no, he's, Luke Brooks. he's a, he's a, mil, a million-plus-dollar player but I think Melbourne lean very heavily into what do you want your legacy to be mm. and and there are plenty of examples of well look here's here's Billy and you know fucking Cam Smith and, and Cronk now out of all of them Cronk went off and had one one more stint somewhere else right at the end right at the end um do you really want to kill your legacy? You can stay here. You can win more premierships because, believe me, we will win more of them within your fucking playing career. Um, you're going to go to Redcliffe. Really? You know, what do you want your legacy to be? Sponge cakes. Yeah, that's it. Um, so, yeah. I'd, and and here's the thing. The first year he's in at Redcliffe, the, Queen, the Queensland jersey is still his. Right, who else competes for the Queensland number six? Like who, who is who's he in front of at the moment? Anyone? I don't, there's no, there's, I don't think there's anybody that's, yeah, that's well, pushing okay. for his spot. Well, then, well, then there, there, there it goes. The Queensland six is here, so they can't use that as an. Yeah, there's, comp- there's competition. I mean, there's competition for hooker, but I yep. think this, I think the halves are fairly fucking set for Queensland. Mm. And uh, regrettably, the fullback is probably set too at the moment. I mean, we're not, I say regrettably for you, Glenny. I mean, it's, it's a fucking delight yeah. for me. But... <laughs> it's a delight for anyone in a blue jersey putting up a fucking eyeball, that's for sure. Um, Jeez. Yeah, so I don't, I don't think Melbourne will try and steal him, but I don't think they will overpay for talent. Oh, also, um, I'd just like to mention the fu- the fu- Nick Meany. Being made to look like he was fucking Tommy fucking Turbo to the power of fucking Pappenhausen, fuck, it was like <laughs> the, the, and Moses Umbai <laughs> with the fucking most lackadaisical fucking Olay fucking the way you go. <laughs> Didn't even fucking try and jog after him either. Just my fucking god. Uh. There was nothing he could do about it. I mean, he changed direction and he wasn't. You know, he he was he was stepped. He didn't. But still, that's, that's going to look. That's going to be brutal on the fucking video. Um, on the socials, John came at us and he said, uh, "Someday when Bellamy is dead and gone, Melbourne will shelf all the Mars bars. I'll be there to dance on his grave when they do." It's a very fucking aggressive, John. <laughs> like, um, but however, I've actually gone through the comments and I've found for you absolute definitive proof that things associated with Melbourne can take fucking cliff face dives with no parachute. I'm going to read you a Super Grover comment. Now, new listeners, every oh. year we have at the end of the season an awards, um, and they're player awards mainly. They're a, a better um, better version of the Dally M's with, with, where awards are actually earned and um, they, they mean more to players to win one of our awards than obviously the, the Dally M. Um <laughs> You know, the, no, look, no one has ever won an award and had to sit in a photo with Luke Brooks at the Twillies. <laughs> right? So, it just so adds just value. Based on that. Um, but we also have categories where listeners can be recognised. Uh, and, and this man has won, in his listening tenure to the show, uh, has won MVC, Most Valuable Contributor, as a tie for first. Yep. Uh, yep. And he has, he has also won Gronk of the Year. For some Multiple truly, times, I'm sure. Some, some times. truly fucking sensational shit posting uh, thing, but this is a, a fucking comment he had to this game. 
Dragons players ringing their mums on Mother's Day. The storm are being meany to us. And that, so that's a joke. He thought he, thought he he thought he did something. That's a joke. He thought he did something there. Like he thinks that's he think. Oh God. So yeah, like if fuck. He's yeah, that important to this show that we may the, need to come up with another award that no one else but him can win. The day Bellamy <laughs> retires, that is the level of fucking fall off that the Melbourne Storm are going to have. <laughs> that fucking comment right there. <laughs> fuck me. Um, Lando, he said, Melbourne are unfortunately a very good side. Dragons are at best an average side at the moment. Yes, they are. How good is Aaron Woods throwing lazy fucking arms out? There you go. Next game. Tremendous. Finally, the uh, Sharks 29 defeat the Warriors 10. Um, the Sharks 29 came through tries to Nico Hines, Tig Wilton, uh, double to Connor Tracy, Jesse Ramian as well. Um, Nico, four conversions and a field goal. The Warriors uh, 10 came through tries to DWZ and uh, Viliami Vilea and Reese Walsh, one conversion. Much has been now, written we mentioned about earlier. The... Sorry, you go. Sorry, we, we mentioned the, about how putrid the Titans are. Right yeah. now, can I just say that? And we've mentioned about Adam Adam O'Brien. Like, is he the you know potentially the first coach that's is he on the block at the moment with Newcastle currently in a seven loss streak and not looking really any any better? For rushing into the competition comes one Nathan Brown Ugh. with this fucking performance from his side, which must have been. One of it's a metric that you can't really you'll never see it written in the stats sheets for games, but the dumbest fucking games of football I've ever seen in my fucking life. I want to start yeah. by giving the, the sharks didn't... a bit of cr- bit of credit for oh, the effort and resolve. I wanted to finish. I wanted to finish positive. Yeah, I wanted to finish positively Sorry. and and give the. Sh- I wanted to finish positive and give sharks the credit. For, for digging in and, you know, mm. playing like, what, 60 minutes or something with 12, and there was a period in there where they were down to 11 with the, with an additional Symbian that probably should have also been a send-off. Um, but holy fuck, the formula for playing teams with a man down in the year of our Lord 2022 game of rugby league is really fucking simple. And when you have a team that consists of guys like, you know, Adam Fanua Blake... <laughs> You run that cunt down the guts mm. over and over again, compress the fucking 11 guys that are left on mm. the field, and then send it to one of your, you know, send it down one side where you've got the overlap, score bulk tries, and prosper. Mm. Then you've got a guy like Sean Johnson, who remember when he came into the league, all the fucking YouTube videos of him playing touch and fucking. This was the game, mate. <laughs> this was the first game in your career where you had the opportunity to set to, to do your YouTube highlight highlight reel on a team that had fucking eleven players at one point, and not a are. single moment, not one, not one fucking moment, did they look? At one point, when the Sharks had eleven men, they had the Warriors stretch for numbers. <laughs> How the fuck is that even possible? Yeah. <laughs> like. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, the... it, it was right at the end. You see it when, and I think it was the last try the Sharks, like I think it was the last try the Sharks scored, where where all of a sudden, like every player that had fucked up went down with an injury or cramp. Yeah, that was, yeah, like, I think you're right. It was the last. It was the last try. That to me, like this game, this game is going to have fucking lasting ramifications in that club. Mm-hmm. Yep. About how they deal with things when things get hard. Mm-hmm. Mm. And there is a fucking mountain that these poor guys have to climb now. There was players because falling that... to the ground in that try. Sorry to cut you off. But yeah, yeah, yeah. there was players falling to the ground before that last pass had been thrown. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Like in, in anticipation to not look fucking stupid, mm. they've, mm-hmm. they've started throwing the legs up looking for, for crampy, crampy sympathy. Yep. Um, and what the fuck was Nathan Brown saying to them at halftime? It, uh, think the formula head, is so fucking head, simple, not little head. <laughs> and they are not. It's not like they're some side. That, oh, and I can't think of a side in the comp that's like you know devoid of fucking good props and stuff, like completely devoid of them. But well, think think of the dogs last year. Yeah, 
you've got guys like fucking Fanua Blake who can drag fucking three guys with him. Yeah. Why are him and Lodge not just alternating fucking hit-ups? Just straight up the and guts just and patience. They only had the score. Ball. Johnson yeah. I mean, on one side, Walsh on the it. other if you have to. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you could compress them to the point where you could just fucking arc around them. Yeah. And get the corner. Like, exactly. Just embar- like embarrassing. But at the same time, as embarrassing as they were, I mean, the Sharks can take a lot from it. I mean, like for them, it's like a fucking epic, you know, backs to the wall, fucking glorious victory, mm. which mentally as damaging as it can be to the to the Warriors because they don't have a coach to fucking coach them out of this hole. Yeah. The Sharks can use this shit all year. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Especially when they've been looking pretty shaky lately. Yeah, that fucking... And, like, what, what a siege mentality fucking seed that is. Yeah. 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 And really, and they mentioned it in commentary as well, but Ramian would have been sent if Kennedy hadn't been sent prior. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I think they've got I, I can't remember who who got who got what, but I think it's I think it's only two and three weeks without them. Yeah, one yeah. got two and one got three. Can't remember mm. which was which though. But that Kenny, that's the worst close line I've seen in a long time. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um Brendan said poke the Warriors with a stick. Andrew said with the two man overlap, Johnson keeps throwing cutout passes. This one fucking hurt, hey. <clears throat> Levi. So, uh, again, one of our long-time listeners and a stauncher fan, uh, as any club has. He said, I love this team with everything in me, but fuck me, that's disgusting. I'm so embarrassed. No direction, no ticker. Fucking embarrassing. Fucking brownie. What is he even saying at halftime? This team needs Tohu Harris in there so badly. Uh, they need Dom- fucking Josh Curran in there. That's what they need. Yeah, yeah. I think they win the game if he's there. Because he's not a dumb Dom- cunt and he might have given him something. <laughs> it's some yeah. organisation. Again, like you know, back back to our point, right? How in a fucking how many years has Sean Johnson been playing? Like all up, not yeah. just just not just non injury time. Well, easily Total. easily he's been playing for like you know what at least thirteen, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How do you not understand how to navigate a football team through a fucking two man advantage? And this is the thing, like, so one of the commenters that you mentioned said, like, you don't throw cutout passes to get around teams. You, you just go, you let the ball do the work. Yeah. yeah. And just go, and just go one man to the next man to the next man until you've got the guy that's, you reach the end of their line yeah. and yeah. you've got two guys left. So he's, like, an, he's an international me. level touch football yeah. player, right? That game is centered around fucking counting numbers, uh, isolating uh-huh. defenders, and, yeah. and, and creating space. The space was already there. Exactly. You would say it was if, if there's anything that is more within his skill set, seemingly. But can, I'd can like you to imagine? See it. Can you imagine, Glenny, if a, if I turned up at your workplace and said, "Hey, Glenny, I've got a fucking truckload of digger parts, and they're yours, fucking free of charge, and you somehow managed to lose money." <laughs> that is the equivalent of what Sean Johnson did. That's exactly it. Like. Yeah, it's um, I'm... this game undid the 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 two field goal victories. Yeah. This game yeah. undid mm-hmm. both of those and then some. <laughs> That's it. Undid the um, goodwill provided through their fucking yeah. you know extended stay in Australia due to you know COVID restrictions. All of but it. Yeah. maybe this is fucking logic karma. So uh, Dominic said, I've followed this team since 1995 and have endured heartbreak after heartbreak and still gave them everything I had with a smile on my fucking face. This right here is by far the most embarrassed I've ever been. I don't know where they go from here. Mm. Uh, and Mezzi said, Sean Johnson has to be the biggest myth in the NRL. Perfect time for him to shine against 12 for 60, 60 plus minutes and down to 11 for 10 of them. And he dishes up nothing. Yeah, that was, it was fairly fucking ordinary. And that's it. That's the round that was, fellas. How good? Um, I probably should look at the tipping. I didn't log into the tipping thing to see how people went. Just give me a second and let me get in there. And I'll uh, get the, uh, the current status. Sure. Would have been a pretty good week, though. I think it was a, fa- it was a fairly it was a fairly um, easy week. I mean, apart from, you know, people could have gone, you know, the other way on the Penrith game for sure. Yep. But uh, I think otherwise I'm mostly, you know, fairly self-explanatory. 
Um, and number one, a tie at top with Kiwi Villa and uh, Cooked Tip. Then we go back one point to Cows to win 22. And Doohig, Cows to win 22, of course, being one of those people that is up there in the standings because they've been tipping the Cowboys because that's their team every week. Um, Alpha Ben RL, Timmy Comedian, Mitch Rich, 250. Ben Dunn's is into the top 10 Benny. on four and against. And Waza, 87. So <laughs> there we go. That's our that's our top 10. And uh, I'm exactly 100th at the moment. However, I'm not too far out of the running. It's fairly compressed. You doing the tips, Glenny? No. Boycotting tipping? Weak. Weak. Fucking weak. All right. And that's it. Um, That is full time for episode. What I say it was? 461. Fuck me. We're getting through them. Um, as always, if you want to support the uh, the podcast, feel free to uh, subscribe on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, everywhere you get podcasts. Uh, sign up to our Patreon at uh, patreon.com forward slash twill nation. And uh, welcome to the, the new patrons this week. I don't have the list in front of me, so I'll get to that in the next episode. Um, Can I point out oh, as well? Yes, go ahead. All the fucking action. We do not have, oh, sorry, we have, but do not use the This Week in League Facebook page. All of the action for comments on the show, uh, comments on the shows or the games or getting things read out on the show. You have to go to Facebook and search in groups for Twill Nation. Yep. And it is a private group. So I've had a couple of people yep. talk about, oh, I can't find you on Facebook. There's nothing on your page. It's not a page. It is a private group. So search groups for Twill Nation, one word, ask for an invite, and we're just, we're, we're like fucking Glenny when he was 16. You just let anyone in. <laughs> fucking, it's, it's Goon Glenny. They used to yeah. call him down at Ed's. <laughs> and Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg's getting too fucking itchy for trigger finger, so when you fucking set up the, the Discord, oh. we're going to start fucking moving, oh. moving shit over there too. Because I don't want to, tell I don't you, want to set up a fucking Discord. We get legitimate fucking like MVC candidates sending me messages going, I just got fucking zucked for something I fucking posted in the group two years ago. Jesus. And Ouch. that happened that happened yesterday or the day before. Okay. And um to one of our n- number one contributors in the so he's on the bench for thirty man. days. It's gonna damage okay. his MVC campaign twenty twenty two. But um yeah, so we need to get to we we do need to move okay, to somewhere. Okay, fair enough. Okay, bit, so that's a the bit thing. less a bit less fucking draconian in the enforcement of stuff because it's the thing. It's not even for anything bad. It's yeah. just it's, it's 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 the reasons are becoming more and more fucking you know ridiculous. Okay. Okay. Oh, also, what also, about Reddit? Um, can we have a fucking Reddit? I feel that'd be easier to fucking manage. No, 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 fuck no. This would be easy to manage, man. I hate Discord mm. with a fucking passion. You hate everything. <laughs> no, I don't. Exactly. Exactly. I'm I've got an queen. offer from a listener to fucking set it up too, so I might take him up on it as well. And um oh, and get in there and do your Just fucking it. work. There. Email me. <laughs> now um <laughs> and good delegation. I, I heard Fuck after, yes. after some after some back and forth with the, the supplier, uh, I finally got the prices and everything for the stuff I wanted to put in the the, the last piece for the members pack. Um, they email, email me back today. There is going to be a wait on the on the the shirts. Like the, the, you know, I'm kind of insisting on the ones that we that we use, and um, yes. they're out of stock at the moment. I think until next week. So probably what, there'll be like a decent you know pre order period anyway, and then after that we'll get them going. Yep. So everything will be in yeah, stock at the yeah. time. Um, that's fucking it for this one. That's us. Well done. How good. Hey, you've got until Wednesday night to figure out where we're going to be meeting people and shit. The magic, where a magic round, oh, <laughs> where and when. <laughs> I just assumed it was a rowdies. And when and when you fucking look, when your little lordlings are going to fucking come down from your mountaintops and fucking mingle with the fucking small folk. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be down Sunday. Unlike me, man. Unlike me, man, and the fucking people, I'll be there fucking all. T- <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be there for most of it. So buy me free drinks. Ben, fucking come on, come and hey, just come, come down and uh, see, see, uh, and say, uh, you know, who do you love and who loves you? That's right. That's it. Well, those, um, those fucking dad cunts. Look at this stage, unless anything <laughs> fucking changes, I'm happy with Fritzenberger downstairs as a venue. Yeah, they were fucking. They they fell off last year though. I mean, they were tough a lot last year to get a decent well, spot and everything though, right? That's why. Yeah, well, that's you the only just reason to get why. there early. You got to set up the fucking eight a.m. Fuck out of here. You get there early. 
Can't you are the one who's saying you're a man of the people? You fucking yeah. get your ass there, cunt. That's it. Oh, yeah. Fucking shot. Do a rugby league podcast. Fucking how many days are you going to shut the magic round, motherfuckers? One. One. None. <laughs> one. <laughs> how many are you showing up? Three. All of them. I'm fucking there from fucking the duration, baby. Didn't you say you were out Sunday? Yeah, I am out Sunday. Yeah, you're a fucking you cockhead. <laughs> you are a fucking cockhead, mate. Man of the hey, fucking people. Man of the cunts. You're not going to fucking be there too. And neither are you, motherfucker. <laughs> at, at this stage, let's do downstairs at Fritzy's, unless fucking Plan B wants to give us a table. But I think that's a bit harder because they're just a food venue. It's a bit harder to park yeah, they're, up there. They're, and, they're, and to, they're, they're too small for to, yeah, because we, we don't know what the numbers are going to be like. But to, to we need to have a, a place. Table all day. Yeah, we need to have a place where that's like our home base. So then if people want to come and say hello, or whatever, then that's fine. Like, I'm not organizing like an event. Yeah, just basically set up a base station for. I think people last year though are more like what's what's fucking the one across the road. What's hotel hotel LA hotel LA? Now? Oh well, no, it's, it's not hotel the, anymore though. It's it's, well, it is, but it's just it's it's gone full. It's gone full Melbourne, and it is the Lord Alfred, no, which it always right was, Lord. which it right, always okay. fucking was. Um, All right, yes, the Lord Alfred. Okay, fine. Do you want to? Because people seem to. Pe- pe- yeah, like I, I mean, I, I don't I don't give a shit where, but I mean, like well, it seemed like people more more went to that one last year. So maybe okay. that's the one. That's fine. Right. Actually, yeah. Fuck yeah. Let's do that. There it is. Done. Shots nice. down that back bar like last year. Fucking hell. Let's fucking let's let's go on. Rugby let's league. Go. Um, <laughs> I I believe at this stage I'll be down Sunday for Sunday's games with Jackson. So right, um, just one. Sorry, yeah, just one. Just one kid. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Cool. I'll be in nice. there Friday. I'll be in there Saturday for the duration. Yeah. Yeah, right, okay. boys. So, so uh, sweet as. All right. See you right. on Wednesday. See Later. ya.